Hi everyone, welcome back to New Zealand Mysteries. This is TJ, thank you for being here once again. Um, this is a really strange case that we're talking over today. It's the first time I really looked into it. I've seen it on the New Zealand police website for these two missing people, but thought I'd better look into it. Uh, before we go on very quickly, I wanted to address the elephant in the room, which is why I look so stupid with this wig and sunglasses and the reason is I have extreme anxiety about the way I look and that is compared to um, all the beautiful ladies of true crime on uh, sorry YouTube and the in the genre um, are all just gorgeous and I don't feel like I fit into that and I prefer to look like this it, I don't know Although I know last video when I did an interview with Aaron Goodwin about Jess Boyce's case, I did take it off in respect for the interview. Um, but here we are. Look at me. Okay, let's get into it. So for our first uh, interview and idea of what is going on, we're going to go to rnz.co.nz and this is in 2015. Police search for missing boy. Police in Invercargill are concerned about the state of mind of a 64-year-old man believed to have taken his stepson from school in breach of a parenting order. Michael Zell Beckenridge has been missing since last Friday and police believe he is with his estranged stepfather, John Beckenridge, who is in breach of a parenting order. Detective Sergeant Mark McCloy told Morning Report he was worried about the welfare of both the 11-year-old boy and Mr. Beckenridge. He says John's obviously backed into a bit of a corner and has done something that's completely out of character, so I do have concerns for them. Police said Mike was not at school when his mother went to pick him up on Friday and it is believed he had left about lunchtime. Mother's absolute worst nightmare. Detective McCloy said the boy had been away from his home for a long period of time and police want to confirm where he is and that he is safe. We are very keen to see him reunited with his mother and to ensure that he is safe, he said. Mr. McCloy and Mr. Beckenridge had been in the boy's life for some years, but the mother has sole custody. It's a bit unusual that they haven't been in touch with family or friends, he said. Police said the pair could be anywhere in New Zealand and were thought to be travelling in a dark blue Volkswagen to, and I can't say that last word, Registration DUYT63. Mike was 1.65 centimetres tall, solid build, and of Asian descent. The stepfather, John Beckenridge, is also known as John Robert Lund, or Nut Garan Roland Lund, or John Bradford. He is 1.75 metres tall, of medium build, and of Swedish descent. And I will show you a picture of this guy. So this is the uh, stepfather that they were looking for, John Beckenridge, but he also goes by all those other names as well. Let's move on to stuff.co.nz. Um, Mike Zell Beckenridge's mother clings to hope. And this was in 2015. Mike Beckenridge's mother is clinging to hope that her son will come home. The family has a great faith. There is hope and at this stage and as a mother she must cling to that. A source close to the family in Invercargill said Wednesday. Now I'll just quickly um, go over to this map here for a moment. So this is the South Island of New Zealand and way down at the bottom here is Invercargill. You can't get any closer to the bone. It doesn't get any closer from than this. Where is the boy? It will be a month on Friday since 11-year-old Mike went missing after being picked up from his Invercargill school by his stepfather John Beckenridge on March the 13th. Beckenridge's car has been found in rough waters below a cliff near Kiriu Bay, which we'll touch on a bit later. 
but there has been no information from the police if anything was inside. The family had been to Curio Bay three times since the car had been found in the water and searched the Catlins area extensively beforehand, the source said. They spent every day until the car was found driving through the forest, friends and family. They family wanted to encourage the public to continue to be vigilant and to report any possible sightings of Mike and Beckenridge, the source said. Now, the S word here, I cannot say, so I'm just winging it. So they are treating it as a slash slash, unfortunately. Police told Campbell Live that they were treating the pair's disappearance as a murder. Yes. Detective Senior Sergeant Mark McCloy said all the evidence pointed to the pair being in the car when it drove over the cliffs at Curio Bay and plunged into the Catlin Sea. Police had measured the distance between where the car stopped on the cliff and the cliff's edge, which indicated the car was airborne and travelling at speed when it went over. I can't believe that someone would be so cruel or self-censored to commit such an act, he said. Police said on Wednesday that they were not ruling out that Beckenridge could have left the country using passports that were not known to the New Zealand authorities. He it was an Australian citizen of Swedish descent and uses at least three aliases. Police were aware that Beckenridge also went by the names John Lund, Nut Goran Roland Lund and John Bradford. It is understood he also used the alias John Locke, but police did not have knowledge of it. As with any case where a person has multiple aliases, there is always the chance that they may have more However, police can only work with the information they have available to them, the police spokesman said. Police were not aware of any aliases for Mike, who lived in, with his stepfather at a Lake Hayes estate house until a family court decision to move the 11-year-old to Invercargill to be with his mother. And uh, in true crime, at least, if you're a true crime addict like me, um, this is a... Losing children um, leads people to do some really horrible things. I've definitely, definitely seen many stories of that. All right. If you have any info about the cases that I cover, um, please contact Crime Stoppers, which is 0800 555 one. Absolutely anonymous. I've checked it out, I know. You can call police on 105 or go to your local police station. Email me at nzmissing at gmail.com if you have any case suggestions. And please take a look at our extremely great Facebook community. Just go to Facebook and check us out. Um, it's a very supportive community. Share all these posts and all these videos over uh, all around New Zealand so we can try and stir up some answers. Hopefully that's the idea. And yeah, I've just got a really wonderful team. I'm really appreciative of them. Now, I'd like to say thank you to a few people. So thank you to Ivy and Aaron and Kaya Rose and Shannon. They all have made donations to the channel slash Facebook page, allowing me to share these videos and posts further and further to hundreds more people. Uh, go buy me a coffee.com slash NZ Mysteries if you want to help out or there's other ways to help all this information is in the description box below please like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to all so you'll get any updates or new videos all right let's get back into it so in the last article they mentioned the Curio Bay cliffs where the car was found in the water so an hour, just over an hour to get there from Invercargill on the corner there of the South Island. I do not like, do not like my computer. It is not playing nice for me. All right, we're going now to tvnz.co.nz. Items of interest found in search for boy and stepfather. This is 2015. Police searching for a boy and his estranged stepfather, missing for over a week, have found a number of items of interest in the Catlins area. Southland Police continued the search for 11-year-old Mike 
Zell Beckenridge and 64-year-old John Beckenridge over the weekend. Police say a number of items in relation to the search were found in the Curio Bay area this afternoon. The items are currently being examined by police. Following the discovery, police staff, search and rescue volunteers and a helicopter conducted a further search of Curio Bay. Searchers carried out extensive search in the Haldane and Tokanui areas in Southland over the weekend. Mike and John Beckenridge went missing on Friday a week ago. It sought the boy left to school in Invercargill around lunchtime that day. He was not there around 3pm when his mum went to collect him and police have concerns for his safety. Police have been appealing to John Beckenridge, who was missing with the boy, to let them know they are both okay after they were spotted by a member of the public in remote bush in the Catlins last Thursday. So that's very interesting. Uh, they were seen in the bush. So were they not in the car? Hmm. Let's go over to rnz.co.nz and it says police end inquiry into disappearance of Mike Zell Beckenridge and his stepfather. Police have wound up the investigation into the disappearance of 11 year old Mike Beckenridge and his stepfather four years ago. They have now referred the case to the coroner and say they will be making no further comment. The boy and his stepfather John Beckenridge disappeared in Invercargill in March 2015. Mike, who at the time was a pupil at James Hargis College, was picked up by Mr Beckenridge in breach of a parenting order. Eleven days later, police discovered the wreckage of his car at the bottom of a cliff in the Catlins. No bodies were ever found, but police say there has never been any evidence to back up the numerous sightings people have reported of the pair. The most recent was in July last year. So multiple sightings they're saying. Um, there was no bodies. Did If they went in the car and they were in the car, did the bodies or could the bodies have floated away? Um, or he had all these aliases. Could he have left the country? Stuff.co.nz Five years on, still no sign of southern schoolboy and stepfather. Mike Zell Beckenridge, who disappeared from his Invercargill school five years ago, would be 16 years old if he was still alive. And this is 2020 where this came out. Then 11-year-old Mike was taken by his stepfather from his school sometime around lunchtime on March 13th, 2015. Half a decade on, there is still no certainty around what happened next. One year ago, police wrapped up the investigation and referred the case to the coroner. The coroner's inquiry into the pair's disappearance remains active. And I actually haven't found any information uh, regarding a coroner's inquest happening, so maybe still in, in the works. Because of the ongoing inquiry, police spokesperson said they were unable to comment on whether any new evidence had come to light since the case was referred to the coroner. Whether there were any suggestions the case could be reopened or whether any Interpol alerts had been issued on the pair. The police investigation began in March 2015 after it emerged that the pair were missing. Police focused on the Catlins along the rugged southern coast of the South Island. Three days later, after the disappearance, a farmer thought he saw the pair in a remote bush location in the Slope Point area of the Catlins. And if we have a quick look at the map, this is where the car was found over here uh, and the car was somewhere over here. And this is Slope Point, um, apparently the bushland where they were seen. On March 20, 2015, a text message from Beckenridge was sent to Mike's mother, but there has been no communication since, and I have never found out what that was. It was at Curio Bay, a popular spot with tourists, that Beckenridge's dark blue Volkswagen was hoisted from the water almost two months after the pair were last seen. The car lay in murky and rough water beneath an 88 metre cliff until it was pulled from the sea by a helicopter and a team of police divers. Visibility of about 30 centimetres 30 centimetres 
had made efforts to explore the car while it was underwater difficult. A murder slash S theory was widely spread but there has been no strong proof to support this. No evidence of bodies were found in the vehicle after it was retrieved. The discovery of the car came after parts belonging to Beckenridge's vehicle were found washed up in Curio Bay. Mike's backpack was also found in the area. Tire tracks leading off the top of the cliff showed the path the vehicle took before ending up in the ocean. It is still unknown whether anyone was in the car as it went over the edge. There is a case riddled with questions. If the two were dead, why haven't their bodies been found? If they're alive, why haven't there been any sightings? Beckenridge's background has fueled speculation that the pair could still be alive. The Swedish-born 65-year-old has multiple passports and at least four known aliases. Um, I was going to say I wonder what evidence was in the car, but when you see that, I don't feel like there's much there. Uh, so this guy worked as a helicopter pilot in Papua New Guinea and Afghanistan and has connections around the world. Shortly after Mike was reported missing, police activated border alerts for the pair, including looking for anyone travelling under Beckenridge's known aliases, John Locke, John Lund, Nut Garan, Roland Lund and John Bradford. After an extensive investigation, police referred the case to the coroner in March 2019. Invercargill Detective Senior Sergeant Stu Harvey said at the time and during the four-year investigation there had been many reports from people saying they had seen an elderly Caucasian male in the company of an Asian boy. However, police had found no evidence to suggest the sightings had been of the Beacon Ridges. The Coronial Services website says the coroner can open an inquiry if the police believe a missing person is dead and the coroner thinks the missing person's body is destroyed and can't be recovered or is lost. The person must also have been in New Zealand immediately before the body was destroyed and unable to be recovered or lost. So I actually don't know what I think happened to these two. So if they went down in the car, um, well, yeah, wouldn't there be evidence of their bodies if they went over the thing there'd be like blood and a smashed windscreen although I can't see a windscreen in that car it looks pretty munted uh, a lot of sightings there were a lot of sightings of these two um, even though the police didn't seem to lean towards that at all um, they had no proof that people seen this but hmm, if a lot of people I mean it's if a lot of people see sightings surely they've got to think that there's something kind of I don't know. Uh, then there's the murder slash S theory. Um, that could be very true, although you would think that their bodies would be found if that was the case. And the most common place or the place I would think they would go would be into that slope point place where it's just bushland if they were going to do that. Um, I couldn't get information of whether police searched all of that land, but I'm picking that they probably did do a big search. And then, could they have gotten out of the country? Police did put that alert on. Did they put it alone, uh, that alert on too late? Or did he have multiple passports? Has he got more than what they think he has? Because he's got a few, but if he knew he was planning this, there is a good indication that he just could have got more and got out of the country quickly under different names and um, be hiding overseas somewhere. Who knows, but thank you very much for uh, checking it out with me and I will see you in the next video. See you later guys.